Alright, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jamel. Hey guys, my name is Olufemi or Jeremy, and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time for those of you who have been around and who have been subscribed to my channel for a while. I've been missing for over a year now, and that's because I was in school and I needed to just finish school and be done. But now that I've graduated, I just decided to give YouTube another go and I'm here again. But that's not the point of this video. This video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up an external GPU to your laptop. A laptop that doesn't have a Thunderbolt port at all. A laptop that has no hope at all, no dedicated graphics card. It just has probably just an Intel graphics integrated card and can't play anything or can't run anything for you the way you want it. So this is a great option for those of you whose laptops which aren't as powerful just like mine i want to play the latest games and run the latest softwares or all this like professional editing slash animation whatever you want to do that requires a lot of power this video is for you i'm going to be showing you guys an overlay of fortnite that i have been playing and it runs smoothly like this thing you would think this is a desktop it is very smooth my laptop only has two cores but the gpu makes up for it and gives me a very good experience so the best part of it is that this is very very budget friendly this is not something that you have to can spend hundreds or hundreds of dollars maybe for shipping depending on what country you are in the world the shipping might be expensive a little bit but like overall for it to upgrade your laptop instead of going to go and buy a whole other expensive laptop plus the shipping uh, or building a pc which too can get pretty expensive all you need to do is just buy a graphics card and get the adapter that the graphics card needs to be connected to your laptop Okay, so the thing that is going to be making all this magic that I'm talking about come into reality is the EXP GDC dock. I hope I got the name right. The, ES, the EXP GDC dock. This thing here allows you to connect your graphics card to it, but you also need a power supply as well. But you connect your graphics card to it and you connect it to your wireless card, right, which is your Wi-Fi card adapter in your laptop. So you're going to have to sacrifice your wireless card to connect this graphics card to it but the pro side to it is that you can always just get a usb adapter like this one here that i have on my laptop and plug it to your laptop to get wi-fi or if you have ethernet you can just plug the ethernet and you shouldn't have problems with it um so here yeah, i'm going to be going into this video and breaking down how to set up this what for graphics cards to get and the whole process of it okay so now compatibility wise this thing isn't going to work with all the hardware just the way you want it to. There are a couple of issues that comes with using this um, dock with your laptop. It ranges from the graphics card you use, the type and version of the EG EXP GDC dock you get, and also your laptop's um, hardware and BIOS. Let me start with the graphics card. The graphics card you use, you only have two routes to go with. You have the NVIDIA route and you have the AMD route. The AMD route almost always works with every hardware, but the problem is that you're going to have to connect your laptop to an external display for it to work. If not, it's not going to work at all. If you plug an AMD GPU and try to use it with this method, it won't work with your laptop's internal screen. You have to use an external screen. But if you go with NVIDIA, they don't have enough compatible graphics cards with this dock. So, but the good thing with NVIDIA is that you, are, you can use your internal display if you don't have a monitor. Uh, you can also still use an external monitor, but like you can still choose to use an internal display. You don't have to use a monitor. I think I'll drop a list of graphics cards in the description so that you can check out which ones are compatible with the EXP GDC dock because you don't want to go and waste your money buying the graphics card and find out it doesn't work with your laptop. The second thing we need to consider is the type of dock you're using. The EXP GDC has different versions and also has different types of connectors too. The different versions uh, basically are just like uh, updates and up, um, little little minor fixes that they have been doing over time mine is the version 8.5 c and i can tell you that my own is just working well so if you can get that one or above i'm sure it'll be fine for most people then moving on to the third compatibility issue that you may run into which is your laptop hardware this has to be with where you're connecting the dock to in your laptop there are, there are different ways you can connect this dock to your laptop which are either your Wi-Fi card slot or your NVMe slot, which is your M.2 slot, or if you have an Express card slot, which is mostly found in older laptops. But for most people, I'm sure would have either a Wi-Fi card slot that they can connect this thing to, or an, a spare M.2 NVMe slot to. To just keep in mind that 
whatever free port you have that this XPGDT supports, that's what you would need to buy so that you can connect to your laptop. Whether it's a Wi-Fi card slot, maybe um, PCIe, mini PCIe or MDFF or whether it's an M.2 slot or whether it's the Express card slot. And then the fourth thing you need to worry about compatibility wise is the BIOS. I know that some laptop, some laptops and some laptop manufacturers put a white list of Wi-Fi cards that can be connected to their laptops. This mostly has to do with people that will connect their dock to their Wi-Fi card slot. So if you're going to be doing that, HP and Dell, I think, HP or Lenovo, I think one of, I think those two, I'm not sure, I will leave it on the screen or on the, and the, and the description. But those two companies, I think in particular, have white list sets in their BIOS that only allow certain Wi-Fi cards or devices to be connected through that slot. So when I was doing my own research for my own hardware, I realized that HP in particular stopped doing this white list um, thing on their BIOS. So like, there's no more white list. You can use any Wi-Fi card you want or any device connected in your Wi-Fi card slot and it will just work fine. So. I think from about 2015 and above, so the um, there's no more whitelist and when my own components arrived and I connected everything together and set it up, plugged it in, the thing just worked flawlessly and all I had to do was install my drivers and it was up and running. So when it comes to this, just make sure, make sure that you do your own research. I think other laptop manufacturers besides HP and I think Lenovo, I'm not sure, we'll leave it on the screen. You don't need to worry about this whitelisting issue. like. If you just buy your graphics card and connect the dock to your laptop it's going to work for you fine so no need to worry about that so things you're going to need for this whole setup you're going to need obviously a working laptop a laptop that has access to ports that the dock needs to be connected to that you need to get also a graphics card then you also need to get the dock itself and the accessories that comes with it. It comes with various cables, one that connects to your laptops and two other ones that connect to your power supply. Then you're also going to need a monitor. This is mostly for AMD graphics card. People are going to go with AMD, but I would just highly recommend you get a monitor either way because the monitor is just going to make it better. I feel like it's also going to run better because you're going to be connecting your HDMI or maybe display port to your monitor directly giving you better performance than when you're just using it on your screen but this is still mostly an AMD problem so once you get all those things you've found out where you want to buy all those things and they you've gotten them and they have arrived let's go into the setup process so for the setup process what we're going to do is to get our EXP GDC dock first and connect all the cables to where they're supposed to be connected to you also need a power supply I haven't really spoken about the power supply yet the power supply you're getting also needs to have the same connectors that the EXP GDC comes with. And also the wattage of the power supply also needs to be higher or be sufficient enough for the amount of watts the graphics card pulls on. So for you to find this information out, you just need to go to the websites of the graphics card and check under the specifications to know how much watts the graphics card pulls. Then from there, you're able to search online graphics cards with that certain amount of wattage or maybe even above. For me, I got a 450 watt EVGA bronze power supply and that's more than enough for my AMD RX 480. That's enough of my card. And the card draws up to about 100 and, or maybe two, it draws up to around 200 watts. I'm not sure, I'll leave it on the screen too. So back to the setup, you have your first cable from your EXP GTC dock. And that cable is supposed to be connected to, it has a 24 pin mount. So it's supposed to be connected to a 24 pin on your power supply like this while the second part of this cord you connect it to your cpu cable of your power supply after doing that you can now connect your graphics card into the dock but you will notice at the top if your graphics card has some pins at the top right here some extra additional power pins here that's where you will connect your six pin vga slash graphics it's either going to be called a vga or a graphics pin so you connect those pins there and that's essentially basically for feeding extra power into your graphics card after doing that what you need to do is to take in this hdmi looking cable here yours will either be hdmi to mini pcie or hdmi to ngff or hdmi to m.2 whatever the case yours may be or hdmi to express card so you plug it to the respective slot of your laptop if in this stage here you need to take off your back panel of your laptop 
you have to do that to access your laptop components so once you have access to the slot you're going to connect your uh, connector to connect it there if it's your wi-fi card remove your wi-fi card and this is sadly the part that you're going to remove your wi-fi card and be without a wi-fi card in your laptop so connect your connector to it and screw it in and close your laptop back but you will notice here that there's a cutout in my old laptop here and that's because the cable needs to flow out of your the back panel of your laptop and in my own case i had to just cut a little strip of metal out there which has become ugly now but i had to do that because i had to close the case of the laptop because it wouldn't close and the cable needed to come out so after doing that then take the other end of the connector which is the hdmi looking port and connect it into the hdmi port on your dock and that's it you're done with your connection now if you're going to be using an external monitor you will need to connect an hdmi or display port from your graphics card and straight to your monitor otherwise you won't have video and it's not going to work especially if you have an amd card so after doing all of this now what you need to do is to turn it on but you have to turn it on in this order you have to first turn on your power supply if it has a switch turn it on first flip the switch on and after doing that you can now turn on the power button of your laptop and when you do that you will notice the lights of your graphics card and the dock and everything light up and that's how you know it's working if you see the fan spinning on your graphics card you know it's already working so once your laptop boots into windows what you need to do first is to go straight into device manager to go and check on that display adapter if your graphics card is being registered there if it's there and you see a little warning triangle icon on it don't worry just know that your laptop is reading the graphics card you just need to properly install the correct drivers of your graphics card for it to work so this part is the part you need to now connect to the internet go to the website of whatever graphics card you bought and search for your graphics cards driver and download it and after installing it your graphics card should be fully registered in device manager if you go back to your device manager you see your graphics card there and from there you know everything is working and you can even access your control panel whether it's nvidia or it's amd and that's how you know your graphics card is fully working so that was it i hope this video wasn't too long and too complicated but i just tried to show you guys how i did mine and what and what you needed to do to be able to make this possible it's not really that hard to do you just need to get the right components to for your laptop and your hardware to make sure it's going to work if you have any questions just make sure to leave them down in the comments below and i'll be glad to answer any of them if you liked this video make sure to give it a like and hit the subscribe button down below to see more of my videos as well as the notification button to know when i post new videos Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Sitting on the interstate five. Driving could never ease my mind.